Let us pray. Our Father and our God, in Jesus' name, we stand in your presence this morning, humbly bowing in worship and praise to your wonderful name. We join with the heavenly hosts to say that, Lord, you alone made heaven and earth and everything that is in it has its being by your will. And so we wish to bow before you, O Almighty God, and welcome you into our midst, our Father, and pray that you speak to us in your word so that we can hear your voice and help us to obey it and to walk and to live according to it, O God. As I stand before this congregation, I pray for grace and wisdom and your favor, O God, to rest upon me and each one of us. Speak to us in your word and bless us. There's a prayer of faith in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. May we sit. Buana sifiwe. Kabla niseme mengi, before I say what I, the Lord has asked me to come and share with us, I'll start by definitely saying my name is Augustine Gito Gawanyaga. I am born again. I love the Lord. He has been good and gracious in my life. I really thank God for what he has done for me. I'm an elder of this church, uh, PCA, at uh, Kasarani Central Parish. It's one of the newest parishes now. Uh, that is just out in Kasarani. So that's where I worship, and I want to thank God for the opportunity. Hallelujah. So I thank God for this time that we have together uh, to share the word of God. Um, there are many things that are happening, and I am trying to join all of them together so that the Lord can speak to us and he can communicate what he has in store for us. I was informed that today is your fundraising day because you need to raise funds for certain activities. Uh, initially, when I had been asked to come and share the word of God, I had been asked to come and talk briefly about leadership, and uh, that theme has not yet left my spirit, uh, the theme on leadership. And now we have giving. So I am going to talk about something maybe very different, but it covers those areas that we are dealing with today. In my church today, and I hope that that's the same thing that's supposed to be happening here, today is supposed to be JPRC Sunday, is it? Or it was last Sunday? Yeah, ours is today, so I think that's why I'm mixing them up. Because we have JPRC today in, in my local church, and you had JPRC last Sunday. So all those themes have been working in my life as the Lord has been speaking to me his word. I'll start by saying we have read the story of Moses. And as I was thinking about this story of Moses and how Moses starts taking the children of Israel from Egypt, I was thinking about my own life and how the Lord in his own grace saved me. This week I have been blessed by a song that I just came across. You know the way you are listening to music and you hear a song. And there is a song by a vernacular singer in Kikuyu. I won't sing it in Kikuyu. But he talks about how he was and how God got him from wherever he was, how he has transformed him and made him into what he is. Somebody by, I think, the name Joseph Wakafura or somebody like that. He sings a song about a tree that is not very useful, but one that the Lord picks and furnishes and makes better and makes it precious. And I look at my own life and I want to believe that each one of us can look at our own lives and we can say confidently that were it not for the grace, the mercy, and the favor of God, we would not be the way we are. Praise the name of the Lord. God has done so much work on us for us to be here. Some of us might think that we have put effort in being here. Some of us might think we have been lucky to be born in certain families, to have gone to school. But I wish to testify this morning that the Lord has had to do 
so much work to make sure that we are here this morning. Bwana situe sana. And when I look at the story of Moses, Moses was basically nothing. He was born in Egypt when Pharaoh had indicated that every boy child born of a Hebrew woman should be killed. So the first thing that should have happened to Moses when he was born is that he should have been killed. So the fact that he is alive here is basically a miracle. Praise the name of the Lord. And so many of us are like that. That the fact that we are here, it has taken the hand of God. And then the Lord has taken him through different journeys, being put in the river Nile, being rescued by Pharaoh's daughter, being brought up in Pharaoh's house, killing an Egyptian, and having to flee from Egypt, looking for a place to stay, finding a priest of Midian out there in the wilderness, being employed as a shepherd, and he is now out there in the woods. So he was basically that kind of person, shamba boy. Praise the Lord. Buona sifiwe. You know, when we think about Moses, we think about this great guy who brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. But Moses was a shamba boy. And at this point, when God meets with him, he actually has a shamba boy mentality. When the Lord calls him, he is so used to leading sheep and goats in the wilderness that he cannot start understanding how he needs to go out and even start communicating to people. So that's why when the Lord calls him, Moses is like, how am I even supposed to talk? He was so used to talking to sheep. I have no idea what language they were using. But he was so used to talking to sheep and goats in the wilderness that when God tells him he can go and talk to people, he doesn't know exactly how he is supposed to communicate with people. And God is not just telling him to go and talk to people. He is telling him, I want you to go back to Pharaoh. Now, I am imagining Moses thinking he had seen all the glory and the splendor of the palace of Pharaoh. The guy is so used to being with sheep. So he is thinking, I am used to sheep. And God is telling me to go and not just talk to people, but to the king. Ataki nikaonge na watu wa kawaida, nikaonge na mfalme. That was big. That was huge. And sometimes I want to say that the calling of God in our lives is such a big thing. Praise the name of the Lord. So with that background, I first want to throw a challenge to us. Uh, when I was asked to come and speak the word of God in this Lee, I have been to this church just to visit or maybe for a different function. But I have been to Isli a good number of times like so many of us would have been. And I know, like all of us know, that uh, this place is surrounded by our good friends, the Muslims. So I will ask us a question. How many of you here have ever read the Quran? Now, please, get serious. Nani amesoma Quran? Yes, I can see one hand, yeah? Thank you, my brother. I can see only one brother who has taken the initiative of reading the Quran. You know, we are Christians. And God has called us to communicate to our world. You see, God is organized. God is intelligent. Before God had called Moses to go and talk to Pharaoh, God had organized initially that Moses would actually not be a stranger to Pharaoh. He had organized that Moses is born a Hebrew by a Hebrew woman, put in the waters of the river Nile, but that the daughter of Pharaoh would come and rescue him so that he can go and grow up 
in Pharaoh's palace. So when Moses was going to talk to Pharaoh, he was not entirely going to speak to a stranger. He had been there. He knew what Pharaoh expected. He knew his standards. He knew his way of life. Actually, God did not have anybody else to send to Pharaoh but Moses because it is Moses who knew how Pharaoh lived his life and how he conducted his business. He had lived in his palace for 40 years. So if God wanted anyone to deliver the children of Israel from Pharaoh, then Moses was the right guy. He may have left for another 40 years, but at least he's the only one among the Israelites who had the experience, the first-hand experience of Pharaoh. God puts us in places because, number one, he knows we can operate in those places. One of my favorite scriptures is Acts chapter 17. It talks about the story of Athens, uh, when Paul went to Athens. And Paul says, I believe it must be verse 16 and 17 again, somewhere down there. It says that God has appointed times and places where men must live. Are we working together in this? God has appointed times and places where men must live. So if you find yourself living in this neighborhood, it may be a surprise to you. It has not surprised God. He had ordained before the creation of the world that at such a time as this, you would be living here, doing what you do, before God appoints another time and another place to come and move you and take you to that place. So if the Lord has put you in this neighborhood, he understands that there is a capability you have and a ministry that you have that you can reach out to our neighbors who are next door to us. So I want to throw a challenge to us. Please get a Quran and read. Find out what your neighbors here believe so that if you want to go out for door to door and talk to them, you can speak their language and you can tell them what they believe because you know it. Please don't hear it from the radio. Don't hear it from anybody coming to broadcast it. You can read the Quran. I have read the Quran from beginning to end. And somebody reminded me that it's not because I had finished reading the Bible. <laughs> but I will say the Quran is shorter. The Quran is shorter so you can finish it faster than you can finish the Bible. The Bible is bigger. Now, I am almost tempted to ask how many of us have actually read the Bible cover to cover, but I won't go there. But friends, for us to be able to communicate to our neighbors, we must know what they know and what they believe. When I read the Quran, I had told myself that if I actually read the Quran and find the truth in it, I will become a Muslim. I was confident of it. I actually went to God and I was like, God, if it is true that this book contains the truth, I will become a Muslim. And I read it with a pen and a notebook, taking notes. And by the way, I found the truth in the Quran. Believe you me, it is right there in chapter 19 of the Quran. Because the Quran in chapter 19 says categorically that Jesus, the son of Mary, was prophesied from the beginning that he would be born. The Quran says that Jesus son of Mary, was born by the power of the Holy Spirit. It is not a man who put Jesus into Mary's womb. It was the Holy Spirit. The Quran says that when Jesus was growing up, he worked wonders, he worked miracles, he raised the dead, he created new forms of life. It is all there 
in Quran chapter 19. And when I discovered that truth, I knew they know the truth, we know the truth, we better walk in the truth. Praise the name of the Lord. That is why I am here, because we have the truth. Friends, the Lord has called us as Christians. Now, today because we are also thinking about giving, our leading words were from the book of John, chapter 3, verse 16, a verse that we know very well. Now, I have two cups here. I came with this one. Then this one has been brought. So let me talk about the one I came with. Praise the Lord. Are we working together? I don't want to lose anyone. So I came with a cup. This cup has an image on it. It is actually not the exact cup I wanted to have. A few weeks back at the place where I work, during tea time, we, we usually make tea somewhere in a, in a small place, so we make tea. As we were making tea, a young man walked in and there was a cup that had an image, an image of Jesus. So you can start imagining how an image of Jesus would look, yeah? Uh, those of us who may have, uh, especially the Catholic background, the only good thing that I have, this cup also has some Catholic inscriptions, so maybe it still makes sense. But a friend of mine walked in, there was a cup with an image of Jesus on it, the way they draw Jesus. And so the guy looked at the cup, and he said, what's, what's, wrong, with, what's wrong with people? How, how do you worship a white guy? You know, he was, he was looking at the cup. How do you worship a white guy and claim that he is your Lord and Savior? Now, he hadn't asked me whether I'm a Christian. He just walked into the room, found me making tea in a different cup. He sees a cup somewhere that has an image, and he makes a comment. Now, that shocked me, because here I am, a good born-again brother, and somebody has started questioning how we worship a white guy. I don't know what answer you would have provided. I don't even know whether you would have said anything. I don't know whether he expected me to say, I also don't worship, because we had never discussed religious issues. So I don't know whether he expected me to tell him, I also don't worship a white guy. You know, that's what I would have said or something to that effect. So I don't really know what answer he expected. But I decided to pick up the conversation so that I could find out where he was coming from. And so he told me, he just went on with the conversation. You know, I usually, I, I stopped going to church because this thing no longer makes sense to me. And he gave me his many reasons. And I will tell you one of them is that uh, he told me that a friend of his had gone to church for one year. And in that one year, they were going to an Anglican church. And usually in the Anglican church especially, they have this tendency of coming and when they are making announcements, they always tell us what collection was done last Sunday. So this friend of his was going to church with a paper and a pen. And every Sunday he would note, last Sunday they collected 200,000. So he notes and keeps a record. The following Sunday the announcer comes and announces we collected 100,000, he records. So by the grace of God he had been able to go to church every Sunday of the year. He had taken a record of all the contributions that had been made in church and he had a good record. So at the end of the year or at the beginning of the following year, when the church started, for some reason he just decided to come to church and he asked for a chance and he came here to the front and he said, I, I have something I wish to say. So he stood there and he said, look, I have been coming to this church for the last so long. I have taken data from your own announcements and uh, you have collected so much money. 
but I have not heard what you have said you have done with that money. And so he raised certain issues in the church. And with that, he walked out of the church and decided, I am not coming back to church because I have issues that are not clearly communicated to me. So him, and now this friend of mine who is talking to me, is telling me for those reasons, we no longer go to church, we never worship this white guy. So I tried my best to remove him from the issues of money and the issues of a white guy to just worship Jesus. And I remembered, I don't know, even as here seated, when we come to church, I don't know whether when you are praying, you imagine a white guy seated in heaven. I don't know what images in your mind you form when, when you pray or when you worship. But I was careful to tell my friend, every time I close my eyes to pray and to worship God, I don't imagine a white guy. Because I don't worship a white guy. And God is awesome. So, the brief word, because I am now towards the end of my sermon. Now, I'm the kind of preacher who gives the title of his sermon at the end of it, so that we now understand where I have been going with all this. So the theme of my story today is the color of God. The color of God. What color is God? Is God white? Is God gray? Is he black like we are? What's the color of God? And when we look at the scriptures, I love the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 4 and chapter 5 describes the worship that takes place in heaven. And the Bible says, He who sits on the throne it gives a description of God that leaves you actually wondering how God looks, his very appearance. It leaves you wondering how God looks when he sits in heaven. The Bible says in chapter 4 of Revelation, after this I looked and there before me was a door standing open in heaven, and the voice I heard first speaking to me like a trumpet said, come up here and I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the spirit, and there before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it. This is someone. So there's somebody, there's someone sitting on the throne. And the one who sat there had the appearance of Jasper and Carnelian, a rainbow resembling an emerald and circled the throne. Surrounding the throne were 24 other thrones and seated on them while 24 elders. I want us to think about the description of the one who sits on the throne as given in verse 3. He has the appearance of Jasper and Carnelian, a rainbow resembling an emerald and circled the throne. What's the image that comes to your mind? What are the features of God that come to our mind when you hear that he that sits on the throne, the Bible does not say he has a head, two hands, and legs, and a body like this one. The Bible says his appearance 
is like jasper and an emerald who sits on the throne. So if for some reason somebody has walked away from God, because the people that presented God to them misrepresented God, it is ours as believers and Christians to invite that person back and tell them, look, people, we are not able to represent God as he is and as he appears. We are not in a position. We cannot tell you how he looks like. The Bible says that the angels in heaven bow before him and they worship him as the one who made the heaven and earth and everything in it has its being by his will. So the God who has made us is an amazing God. I don't have time to describe for us how amazing is that amazing God. But I want to quickly say this. We are talking about giving. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And I quickly want to say to us that we do not give our money and anything else we give in church because we have money. We don't give anything we give to church and in church because it has been asked for us to give. The Bible says God loved the world. Our giving is as a result of our love. We give because we love. We give because we love. And God, because he loved, gave us Jesus, his only son. He gave himself, not because Jesus was available to be given, but he gave because he loved. And so today, as we come to bring our offerings and our tithes, we are doing this because we love. We love God. We want to expand his kingdom. We want the kingdom of that God we have believed to expand and to grow. So we don't give because we have money. I was thinking about our giving, and Jesus was clear about giving because he sat in the temple as people were giving, and he watched those of us who wear good suits and drive big cars, and they had come into the temple to give because they had money. And they gave, and it was announced in church that XYZ had given a million because he had it. Another one had given a hundred thousand because he had it. So they had given because they have. But then there was one who actually did not almost have anything to give. But she came into the house of the Lord and the only thing she had was herself. But because she loved, she gave everything she had. And Jesus said, this one is to be commended. She understands the reason for giving. You don't give because you have. You give because you love. And so even out there in your neighborhood where you go and live with your family and friends, don't give because you have. Give because you love them. If you give yourself to your husband, you are not doing it because he has demanded. You are not doing it because he is your husband, he is your boss. You give yourself to him, you give yourself to your wife because you love. Praise the name of the Lord. We give because we love. We give our children anything we want because we love them. We give stuff to our parents because we love them. You give because you love. You don't give because you have it. Sometimes you can even borrow. You can beg so that you can have something to give because you love. So when the Lord transforms us 
and helps us to understand the reason for our giving. We will worship God as God. We will not worship God like my friend who thinks about a white guy who brought religion into this world. You will, there is not enough time for us to find out why and how we have come to know the Lord as we know him now. But I will tell us, I was looking at the life of Moses because I wanted to mention something about leadership which I don't have time for. But I will say two things about our kind of leadership. That when we think about leadership in this church, because leadership and giving work together, when we think about leadership in church, there are two kinds of leaders that I will mention. There are church leaders and there are Christian leaders. There is a world of difference between a church leader and a Christian leader. A church leader is a leader of an organization. So he can be a manager like any manager you know. He can be a leader like the president or anyone that you know is in leadership. But a Christian leader is a man that is called of God and has understood the calling of God. So Christian leadership is not for Christian leaders in front of us. Each one of us that has been called by God we have been called to lead our society to Christ. So each one of you seated in front of me is a leader because you are a Christian. And when you look at the life of Moses, when God called him, he understood his call and he followed God. I do not know how many of us here listening this morning have heard the voice of God and responded to it and understood the commission of God in their own lives. Some of us are waiting to be led, but I wish to inform you this morning that God has called you to a position of responsibility as a leader, as a Christian. And you don't have to wait to be a group leader. You do not have to wait to be a church elder and a minister to practice your Christianity because all of us, the Lord has given us a commission. Carry out your life with fear and trembling because it is the Lord who works in us. When you understand your calling, like Moses ended up understanding, his own calling. He was able to rise and remove his mentality from discussing issues with sheep and goats and he started making progress to talk to Jethro, his father-in-law, and tell him, I am now going back to my people Israel. He was able to go to the people of Israel, the same people he was afraid to confront because he was asking, when I go to them and I tell them, you have sent them, you have sent me, how will I explain it? And when the Lord came through to his spirit, he was able to go to them and tell them, the Lord, our father, who was the father of Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac, has commissioned me to come and lead you out of this place. And when he spoke to them, they believed him, and they walked out with him, and he was able to walk over to Pharaoh and tell him, Pharaoh, I have returned, and this time I have not come as your servant, I have not come as your son, I am getting my people, the Hebrews, out of this land to the land that the Lord has promised church. Two quick things. The Lord has called us and he has loved us. He has given us Jesus. I said it. The Muslim know it. It is in their Quran. The next time you see them in your neighborhood, tell them it is written in their book that God loved the world. He gave us Jesus. The Lord has spoken to us Christians the same scripture that he loved this world. He has given us Jesus. It is upon us now to see the burning bush like Moses saw it, and respond to the calling of God. And when we do that, the Lord will transform our lives and give us the commission to go out and do the work that the Lord has called us to do. Praise the name of the Lord. Let us rise to our feet and pray. Our Father and our God in Jesus' name, we thank you and we praise you this morning. Thank you, God, for reminding us that you gave yourself to us because you loved us. Many times, Lord, we forget. We forget your love towards us. And we also forget to love others. 
that we ought to love, and we do not give ourselves to them. We also even forget to love you as we ought. And when we are asked to come and give into your work and expand the kingdom of God, we complain and grumble and walk away from church and walk away from you. This morning, O oh God, we pray that you forgive us. Forgive our sin, O oh Lord. Forgive our wickedness. Forgive our waywardness, O oh God. And now turn our hearts towards you, O oh Lord. Help us to hear your voice. When Moses saw the burning bush, he recognized your presence. Lord, you have spoken to us in different ways. There are all people in this congregation, Lord, that you have been speaking to in different ways, in different circumstances. Some have had to go through trouble just so that they can hear your voice. Others, Lord, you have continued to speak to their lives. And even this morning, you have spoken to us in your word. We pray that, Lord, like you opened the eyes of Moses to see the burning bush, you will open our eyes to see your power and your glory. You will open our ears to hear your voice. And you will open our hearts to love you, to be able to respond in the way that, Lord, you expect of us to respond to you. Many of us, Lord, have struggled in our family relationships with our spouses, with our children, with our parents, because we have not heard your voice, that we need to love so that we can give ourselves to you. So this morning as we came into this house, we pray that you help us. Turn us around to yourself so that we can go out and show your righteousness in our own lives. We give you thanks and we worship and adore you for you alone are our God. And as we conclude this prayer, if you are in this sanctuary, and you are like our friend who has been walking away from God instead of walking back to God, this morning the Lord says, I still love you, for God so loved the world that he gave. We too, for our love for God, we must give ourselves. There are things we must quit and surrender and leave behind so that we can give. Moses left Midian. He left the sheep and goats and followed the calling of God. You may have, tending, you may have been tending sheep and goats out there in the wilderness. The Lord is calling you to restore your relationship with him so that he can lead you into his sanctuary. So if you're here in this congregation and you wish to say, I wish to come to the Lord, you're welcome to the love of God. Father, we thank you for your word. May it have room in our lives. May it help us to live well with those we love and care about. May it help us to serve you in your sanctuary to the glory of your name. We give you thanks and we pray humbly, believing and trusting in Jesus' holy name. Amen.